for their very lives. It would be hard for the human race to get along without our foster mother, the cow. Modern dairy farms are the symbol of cleanliness with their neat corrals, white fences, and tidy barns. Dobbin and Black Beauty are trained to haul the wagon through the network of farm lanes and gates. The cows have three meals, one in the morning, one at noon, and one in the evening. Part of the cow's food is mixed in the silo and is made up of alfalfa, oats, hay, and molasses. Some of their food is raised on the farm. Other food includes such things as cotton seed, linseed, and barley. The diet is carefully arranged to give the cow strength and to increase her milk supply. Beretta drinks daintily. Perhaps the water is too cold. She will drink about 10 gallons a day. The crystal clear water shows the high standard of care on this modern farm. It takes a lot of work and scrubbing to keep the barns, stalls, and troughs clean. Every minute in the cow's life is planned so that she will produce a quantity of pure, rich milk. Cows tend to pick out certain other cows for their special friends. One finds them together day after day, sometimes with their necks crossed or just resting near each other. This cube of salt is pink because of a touch of iodine. Salt is kept in the trough at all times. Cows, like people, must have their minerals and vitamins. The bulls have individual paddocks. These bulls are fine, strong specimens and should have the best of calves. They are carefully handled and so they are gentle. Special food builds their massive frames and gives them power. This bull, named Bet, has a good appetite and is being well fed. It takes a lot of food to fill up these animals. They have four stomachs. Next, Maxim gets to hit the bull's eye. Well, now's your chance. The superintendent shows a year-old bull to a prospective buyer, Mr. Allen. This bull is the son of Bet and shows his fine breeding and excellent care. The superintendent proudly shows off his fine points. A bull is led by a ring in his nose because this has been found the most practical for the farmer and in the long run, the best for the bull. Mr. Allen likes the massive frame, the straight back, the fine, big hind quarters the wide spring of the ribs, the clean legs, and the well-set, beautiful head. Mr. Allen buys this bull for $700. Mrs. Crooked Horns enjoys an afternoon's rest. Did your mother ever tell you you were awkward as a cow? When she eats, the cow first swallows her food almost whole. Later, it comes back up in the form of cud and is rechewed. Watch carefully, and you can see the cow bring up her cud. Oh, you missed. Watch more carefully. There it goes. A large mouth, as we see, is a point of beauty in a cow. She must be a good eater to produce a quantity of milk. About every three months, cows must be clipped. The state law demands that their udders and tails be clipped so they will be free from hair. A dairyman clips the heads of his cows so they will show off their fine points. The cow's horns are cut off if she is rough or if they are too deformed. Good horns are a point of beauty. Milking time, four o'clock in the afternoon. Each milking lasts two hours. The milkers bring the cows in from the different corrals to the milking barns. The milkers wash the barns and sterilize the buckets before each milking. Every cow will go directly to her own stall or stanchion. The cows look forward to the milking because they are fed at this time 
and also their bags feel tight and would get sore if they were not milked regularly. After milking, the men brush and curry the cows until their coats shine. Jim will give us a special demonstration of milking. He chooses Geralda, who holds many state records. For three consecutive years, she has produced over 20,000 pounds of milk, and this year will produce over 24,000 pounds. Geralda has the soapy nose of the moo cow moo. A healthy cow has a wet nose because cows only perspire through their noses. Geralda is worth $10,000, and her calves are also very valuable. Geralda's udder has already been washed, and now it is carefully wiped. Everything is done to ensure pure milk, free from harmful bacteria. Each cow is an individual and must be handled differently. The skilled milker has rhythm in his big, long strokes. Jim is careful in working around the cow not to upset her. If she gets excited, she may hold her milk. Whoa, boss. Steady there. That's it. Good, bossy. Poor oh, girl. Easy. Geralda wears her farm identification number around her horns. She is a fine example of a Guernsey cow with her straight back and large, deep body. At the milk house, daily records are kept of the weight of each cow's milk. Monthly tests are made by a milk tester from the state university to determine the amount of butterfat. This herd has a very fine butterfat record, a characteristic of Guernsey cows. Dobbin and Black Beauty are still busy making the rounds of the different corrals. Now it is time to feed the calves. Each age has its special food and special care. These calves are about eight months old. Any dairyman would be proud of this line of purebred. Here are the barns for the very young calves. The calves are taken from their mothers when they are a day old because these highly bred cows have milk too rich for the babies. Ed has charge of the mothers and calves. First, the babies must be taught to drink from a bucket. Special things like calf meal are added to their diet just like in a baby's formula. Yes, this baby already trusts Ed. And off to the barn we go. Like the cows, the calves spend several hours a day in their pastures. Ed trains them to be gentle and affectionate. Guernsey cows are famous for their good disposition. This calf represents the fulfillment of a dairyman's dream with her exquisite intelligent head, graceful strong body, and beautiful fawn-colored coat. Calves are inquisitive like children and watch everything that goes on around them. Princess May of Green Meadows has a baby, Daisy, just an hour and a half old. Each mother and calf have their own corral. May dries off her calf and takes good care of her. And Daisy responds to mother's affection. Cows tell their own babies through their sense of smell. One of the first thing the calf tries to do is to stand up, usually. And, well, well, too bad. Yes, it's a natural impulse for all mothers, as we see here, to guard their babies. And the cow has a deeper maternal instinct than other animals. They're jealous and wish Daisy belonged to them. Cows want every calf they see. Now Daisy wants food. A calf... But Daisy seems to be having trouble. She can't find that dinner. Oh, it isn't here, or here, or here. Well, she'll look until she finds it. And you can be sure nature will tell her what to do when she does find it. <laughs> 
And so we leave Princess May, mothering not only her own baby, but in reality, the whole human race. <laughs>